Carrie started out as a as a short story it to did. a magazine. It did. It just grew a little bit too long, and I threw it away. And my wife fished it out and said, "This is." sort of amusing, you want to go on with this, and so I did. Is that exactly what she said? No, it isn't exactly what she said. She said it was really good, and she wanted to read... She said she wanted to read the rest of it. Why, so. why didn't you want to write the rest of it? It's too hard, I was lazy, and also it was going to be too long. I didn't understand wh how I could possibly market something like that, and frankly, I needed the money. And uh, it was a story that was clearly going to outgrow any of the markets that I sold to. They were mostly the sort of magazines where you turn them sideways, a picture falls out <laughs> at that time. They had names like Cavalier and Dude and Gent and Adam and stuff like that. <laughs> the kind of magazines that, you know, <laughs> Levi Johnson poses in now. <laughs> the guy. Yeah, right. <sighs> that stud that was going with Sarah Payne and his daughter. <laughs> Bristol. So, the, yeah, Bristol Palin. And uh, so the story grew a little bit, and, and I said to Tabby when she fished it out, this is longer than the word requirements of any of the men's magazines that I was selling to. And she said, do it anyway. Uh, she, was, she was good that way. She's a lot braver than I was. And uh, so I did it, and um, it sold as a novel. It's a skinny little thing, but it, it, <laughs> it made me what I am today. <laughs> Is it true that you got the call that they had sold it uh, and what, your telephone line had been disconnected? We at didn't one have point? a phone. How could, they? Uh, Tabby uh, uh, dictated that we take it out. We had to let something go in order to continue to pay for, um, you know, the baby food and the baby medicine and everything. We had to economize, you know. and. Uh, Things have changed so much that in this country people are still arguing against health care, you know, and this stuff goes on and on. But uh, we didn't have a phone, and I got a message over the intercom. I was in the teacher's room, and it was, uh, Stephen King, please come to the office. You have an urgent call from your wife. And I knew going up that either a kid had broken his leg or I sold the book. <laughs> and it was the book, the, uh, the editor from Doubleday had sent a telegram. And, uh, had sent a telegram. Sent a telegram, yeah. Which said, do you still have it, by the way? Uh, I think I, it said, congratulations, Carrie, officially a double-day book, advanced $2,500, the future lies ahead, love, Bill. Wow. The and the future did. Pardon me? And the future did lie ahead. I guess so. Do you have any idea? No. What it would be? I had no idea, none. And my wife asked me, I can remember one night, we were lying in bed after the book had been sold, and she said, do you think there will be any more money than the $2,500 advance? <laughs> no, I mean, it was a fair question, and $2,500 was a lot. The most I'd ever made from a short story sale was 500 And we had used the $2,500 to buy a Ford Pinto, you know, the car that exploded and everything. <laughs> But it was new. We had a new car. We had, we had two kids, uh, and we had a new Ford Pinto that my wife cursed about because it had a standard transmission. She couldn't <laughs> drive it at first. And I said, yes, I think there'll be a paperback sale. We share the money with Doubleday. It was a 50-50 split. And she said, how much do you think it might be? And I said, well, it might be as much as $60,000. And we would get 30, and I could afford to take a year off and write another book. Uh, which is what I wanted. I wanted a little room to run. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turned out that it sold for $400,000, which was more than... And, and the thing about that was, I got that, that news from my editor on a, on a Sunday. My wife was up visiting her mother, and uh, I was in the house. She'd taken the kids. I was there by myself, and my legs went out from under me. I was standing in the doorway. We did have a phone by then, at least. They advanced... <laughs> But we were living in a real dump of an apartment, and I just slid down the doorway between the kitchen and the living room and sat there and said, you said 40000 right? <laughs> and he said, no, $400,000. And we had the conversation, and I just walked around the house, and finally I couldn't gather my thoughts. And uh, I finally decided I had to buy my wife a present. And it was, it, it was, now wait a minute, wait, wait. It was Sunday. Everything was closed except for a Lavertier's drugstore, so I bought her a hairdryer. 